Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! My name is Dracon the Willem Fuzzbottom Jr. and these are some of my patrons! Snow Kieran, Hidder, and a special thanks to my special sponsor, Lit Dragon! Well guys, it is finally time to do some sequence breaking. For those of you who don't remember or are new to my channel, let me go ahead and give you a recap of what's going on. So you'll probably notice that I'm playing as a giant frog right here. In fact, I got two of them on my team. The Green Frode and the Red Frode. I encountered these characters way back in the Gaian Islands. I'm not sure what episode of this Let's Play that was off the top of my head. It was like episode 9, 10, 11... Point is, it started a three-part episode called A Hop, Skip, and a Break. And, oh boy, fun times to be had. Here's the thing with these frog characters in RPG Maker 3. Their positioning on the map or the character models, something about them is so wonky that every time you go in and out of the menu, the game tries to connect their... not connect, correct... The game tries to correct their position on the map, and as a result, the game pushes you backwards. And when I discovered this glitch back in the Gaian Islands, fun times to be had. Look, thanks to this glitch, I'm able to just wallow right in here, well, hop, because wallowing is too slow, into this building. Oh boy, I had some fun with this glitch, hopping through walls, going out of bounds, and then we came to this place. Now, under normal circumstances, I should not be able to bring these frogs here. Let's see, the normal sequence of events is, at the Gaian Islands, I would fight a boss, gain a level, gain a spell, and the frogs would leave. And then, I would go to a volcano, fight a boss, gain a level, gain a spell, and then, I would fight Sen, who would give me the key to access this tunnel, to access this area. Oh, and along the way, an optional quest that... An optional quest would open up, which would allow you to fight a boss, gain a level, gain a spell. Long story short, Akira should be at level 15 by now. Oh yeah, and there's also a piece of equipment that would be really nice to have along the way here, but uh, we're not getting it. In fact, we're not getting those levels, we're not getting those spells. We're sequence breaking the game. And I'm curious how far I can sequence break this game. Given that I'm coming here under leveled, but with a couple of extra party members, can I make it to the final boss? That is the question, and I'm going to go be going to go ahead and give that a shot in this bonus episode. I would have done this sooner, but I kind of wanted to try to beat the game legit. But now that the game is finished, now I get to have my fun. As if I didn't have enough fun already. Anyway, I'm kind of walking around the edge of this forest here because... On this map, only the forest has monsters in it. So by going around out here, I just go ahead and avoid those monsters. And now we come to this place, Sofino Passage. I'm going to have to go through that place because right on the other side of this cliff is a ravine. It looks a lot nicer when I'm looking at it during the day. But even with this glitch, I cannot make it across here, because the moment that I touch the water, the game will hit a failsafe and kick me to the title screen. So, let's just go ahead and, well, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna save often, because if we're going into a tunnel, we're gonna be dealing with random encounters, and I'm not sure how capable we are of dealing with them. I mean, one of those spells that I got along the way to get here, if I was playing this legit, is a pretty dang good spell. 
So, going through here without that spell, it's going to be tough. What is my item situation, by the way? Uh-huh. I'm going to want to stop for items at some point. How much money do I have? Oh, that's not very much money. That is not much money at all. By the end of this Let's Play, by the time I got to the final boss, money was not really a thing I was concerned with. Center, right, center, left. In fact, since, ba since random encounters don't give you anything but experience, or not experience, they don't give you anything but money, they were kind of becoming a waste of time. You know, while we're here, Pelagia, why are you assuming that Akira is somebody you have to fight? What is with the fight now, ask questions later mentality you had when we met you? I mean, now it makes sense. I've got a couple of giant frogs with me. But when we come here legit, Akira is all by himself. And you just assume that he's one of the bad guys? Alright, Green Throat, how capable of you are you? Okay, you're the healer. That which would explain why I had the red throat in the back. That guy is going to be the magic user. And for the sake of avoiding damage from Pelagia, who may or may not be too strong for me, I'm going to do that. Oh, that didn't work well enough. That was a lot of damage there. But the crows are actually kind of weak. Although it will be kind of helpful to have them on my team. Okay, wow. Yep. Yep, we're definitely at a disadvantage coming here. Pelagia definitely would have gone down by now. Given the circumstances, I'm probably going to want her on my team for the final battle. Let's go ahead and skip this cutscene. And there we go, Pelagia is now on our team. So let's compare stats between Akira and Pelagia real quick. This will be simple. Akira's got a whole bunch of 48s, and Pelagia's got stats all over the place. Most of them are higher. With the exception of... Magic. But she doesn't even have any magic spells. So, yep, Pelagia is stronger. Which makes sense, she's at level 14. Which is, bare minimum, the level you're supposed to reach this place at. Now, let's see, check our formation. Pelagia's in front, it looks like, so that's good. So, let's see here. Nah, I guess I will keep the green throat in front for the time being. It probably won't be able to cause much damage, if any, but it's a target for the bad guys to go after. Okay, so let's see here. Oh, random encounters. What I could do to avoid these encounters is simply, let's see here, just use that glitch and just back up all the way through the dungeon. But I don't have all day. So we're not doing that. Uh, you're looking a little worse for wear there, Froggy. Don't worry, we're right right by a heal point. Nah, I guess you're not going to be terribly helpful offensively. And even if this road here is causing 52 points of damage against these guys, I have a feeling that that spell is not going to be helpful against the later bosses. By the way, there's going to be definitely some more sequence breaking 
as we go along, we're going to be skipping another dungeon along the way. In addition to the dungeon from before this point. Alright, all healed up. Since we made it to this point, going to save. And now we are presented with a locked door. What we're supposed to do is go down that tunnel and go through some battles and a mini boss sort of thing and eventually come across a key and eh, that'll take a while and there's a lot of encounters along the way. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to secret break right here as well. So not only are we going to be skipping an entire dungeon, but we're basically skipping half of this dungeon. Hooray! Now comes an important question. Ooh, hold on. That question doesn't come yet. That question comes after we get through this part. It's too bad we don't have that trap disable spell now. Left, right, center, left, left. Left. Oop. Right. Center. Left, left. You definitely want to be careful as you're passing through these because... The hitbox of the traps is a little bit big, so don't stray close, too close to the middle there. Alright, made it this far. Heal and save again. Alright, so now comes this. Behind this locked door is a boss fight. Using this glitch, I could totally bypass that boss fight if I wanted to. But I don't want to. Given that Akira is underleveled, I feel like it would be beneficial if I went after this boss so that at the very least I could have one more level as we move on. So let's see how well this fight against the boss works. Tell you what, how well we do against this boss is going to be kind of indicative of how we do against the rest of the bosses in this. So the first one we want to go after is the one in the back. I remember that for sure. This is where Akira's magic is going to come into play. Oh wow, he only has lightning. That That is how crippled Akira is. Normally by this point, he'd have an ice spell and a fire spell. And that optional spell, which is really awesome. That optional spell being Shockwave, which can target all enemies. Well, let's hope that this thing is weak enough against lightning. That'll, that'll have to do. What do you got on you as far as, like, other stuff? No, all you do is recover. It's kind of nice that you have a revive spell. I'm going to want to keep that in mind. Now, that guy in the back is, of course, in the back, so... Greenfroad and Pelagia won't be able to attack him. A stimulant. This is going to raise attack power. Do we want that, or do we want... No, let's just focus on the guy in the back, and then we'll worry about stat buffs if we want to. In regards to Pelagia... Eh. If only she had a magic attack. And these guys are poisonous. Also has a nice spell. Okay. Good news is... Red Throat can survive an attack. Bad news is... Red Throat can't survive too. But Greenfroat has a revive spell, so there's that. Do we have MP recovering items? Alright, do you get revived with full health or half health? It looks like half health. Uh, 
Ah, misses. Alright, who are you going after? Akira. How much damage is he going to take? He can survive another one of those. That right there was MP recovery. Still not down. This is definitely going to take some effort. What items do you have? Revival elixir. That might come in handy later on. Oh! And he's dead! Alright, cool. You're not gonna cause much damage. But you're out of MP. That revive spell apparently costs a lot of MP. Speaking of MP... Alright, you have a white wine. Don't really need to worry about MP at this point. Akira can just go ahead and attack the guy in front. And the Red Frode has plenty of MP to keep going. Alright, now we're gonna use Stimulant on Akira. He's going to be attacking the most frequently, so he could benefit from... Oh gosh, what is this spell? That is not a spell that they used before! That is totally not a spell they used before! Don't use that again! I should probably consider healing... but I'm taking my chances. I will probably regret it. So what kind of I uh, items do you have, Pelagia? You have a spotted egg. You know, if somebody's got a heal, let it be you. Alright, who are you hitting? Pelagia? Can she survive it? Yes. Alright. <sighs> I do not promise that I will actually be able to break the game, or beat. I, pro I do not promise that I'll be able to beat the game like this. Yeah, it seems a little bit unlikely, to say the least. It's going to require your strategy. Also, this is totally why I'm going after this boss. That level up is going to be helpful. Two throws down. But, that's the end of this fight. Alright, that'll give Akira that level, and there's gonna be a cutscene, so let's skip ahead. Um... Oh, okay. It's like, what happened to my Frodes? Oh, they're dead. That's what happened to my Frodes. Oh, that's unfortunate. You wanna know why that's unfortunate? That's unfortunate because that means we can't back up through this wall to heal. Well, we got a revi revival elixir, so there's that. I'd, I'd hate to have to use this. Let me think here. No. No. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. We'll rest at the end. And hopefully, resting at the inn is a good idea, and revise dead party members. I feel like it doesn't, though. But if it doesn't, what was I supposed to do about it? Alright, head straight into Sofino. There's no random encounters between here and there.
So, here's where some strategy is going to be coming into play. Some more strategy. I don't know how good an idea this is, but I'm going to let Pelagia leave my team. Which I will explain why after we rest in here. At least the inn is only 50 gold. Could really use that money for healing items, but I'll take what we can get. No, they're still dead. Alright, I'm going to reload that save that I just created and use the revival elixir to revive one of the frodes. And in case you're wondering why this is good game design, to not have a way to revive your characters after that boss fight, unless you use a revival elixir, is because there's a heal point right behind here. And under normal circumstances, you could totally just reach that. But these are not normal circumstances. We bypassed the key. This is what happens when you sequence break. All right, Red Frode, I think it's your turn to lead. Need this, and that'll heal us up. It's a shame that we had to use the Revival Elixir, but on the bright side, this also means that we don't have to spend 50 gold at the inn. Mind you, the, I'm pretty sure that the Revival Elixir is more expensive than staying at the inn. It's too bad we couldn't survive that fight with everybody alive. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and head into Sofino and let Pelagia leave. Alright, so that takes care of Pelagia. Again, I'll explain why Pelagia is out of my team, why I let her leave my team when it becomes relevant. First things first though, it occurs to me that Akira has the Topaz equipped, which raises his agility by 10. As I have previously discussed, that does not help. Basically, raising his agility would raise his accuracy, but only by 10 points is not beneficial enough. He also has the Sapphire, which raises his magic, and that's not good enough. So what we're going to do is sell both of those. Can we equip the, unequip this first? That might be important. I don't know if you can sell it. Well, let, let, I'm kind of curious. Can you sell a piece of equipment you have equipped? I think you can. Well, I'm going to sell the Topaz and the Sapphire and buy Akira and Onyx. The Onyx will raise his defense by 10 points and his magic defense by 5. Not very much, but considering he's underleveled, every little bit helps. And yes, you can sell things you have equipped. And then there's the matter of the Sirline. The Surin line recovers 200 HP, and it costs 100 gold each. The thing of it is, we don't have anywhere close to 200 HP, so I'm kind of wondering if it would be better to go back to Oteki, or Okiku, whichever it is, and buy some spotted eggs there. They heal 100 points each and are cheaper, so I could definitely stock up on more of those. I think I will do that, actually. More healing items is better, right? After all, back in the Safino Church, we have a way to just quickly get back there. Go through Revenus, go through the tunnel nearby, and there will be Otekiku. Alright, so this place is Oteki. Now that it matters to remember that now, this is the end of the Let's Play, pretty much. By the way, since we now have that teleporter open, we don't really need the Frodes to go back and forth to Sequence Break anymore. Could just go to that cave, die in islands, and fight the boss and let them leave. However, there's still some more Sequence Breaking I want to do further up. 
Oh yeah, and the reason we're going to Oteki to buy these spotted eggs is because they're the cheapest here. Alright, so back in Sofino, we're leaving Sofino, and we're going to make our way towards Himalaysko. Now normally at this point in the game, we're supposed to head to Ryu Tower in order to find some magical orb that will unlock Himalaysko. But we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to cautiously go around the edge of the forest so we don't hit any random encounters. Gonna save in front of Slovenia, or in front of Himalaysko. Alright, let's head inside. So, right up ahead is the barrier which is holding the door shut. There's no way I can break through it now. Wanna bet? And we're through. Welcome to Himalaysko. Alright, there's a heal point right there, which we will need shortly. First things first, come in here. There's a treasure. Give me the treasure. Thank you. A sirloin. So we'll at least be getting a few sirloins from treasures as we go along. That'll be handy. Let's see, what was this? This was a revival elixir. That reminds me, here is my item situation. Did not change anything with Akira aside from getting that onyx. And of course he just got the sirloin from that treasure chest. Gave this Frode a bunch of spotted eggs and there's the revival elixir that it just got from the treasure chest. And uh, here's the red Frode spotted eggs. You'll notice that the red Frode also has a revival elixir. That's because Pelagia was holding it, and as I decided to just snatch that from her. Uh, let's see here. I think there was one more treasure down here. Yes. So let's grab this. The bourbon. Not going to be as handy. Alright, let's see here. So right here, in front of this door, is going to be a fight with Sen. I could potentially sequence break that, although it would be very difficult. Here's the thing about going through the walls in dungeons. You go through the wall in dungeon, you can just hop around out in the void. But if you go through the wall inside a building, such as a castle, there's no ground out there, and so in an attempt to find the ground, the game just lifts you up to infinity, and um, you're not getting back out. Or back in, as the case may be. So, in this situation, probably want to go after Sen. Not only because we want to avoid glitching our way into infinity, but we also want Sen in our team. And that is the reason why I let Pelagia leave. So that there would be room for Sen. You can only have up to four party members. And Sen is going to be really helpful against Nikolay. Because Sen has that shockwave spell that hits all enemies. So definitely want that. First things first though gotta deal with her transformed possessed self. Good news is I'm pretty sure she's weak against lightning. Bad news is I'm under leveled. She was not very difficult the first time we came here. It'll be interesting if it turns out she provides more of a struggle this time. Alright, how much damage is that going to cause? 54? Oh, alright. This won't be a big deal then. I mean, she's no pushover. Eh, never mind. She's basically a pushover.
And that'll still do it. And now that we're getting Sin on our team, something I could do is take her out of this castle with me using this road glitch. Because under normal circumstances, even if you're able to get here like you're supposed to, and unlocking that gate out there with the magical orb from the tower, once Sen joins your team, for whatever reason, the gate is closed again. You're not allowed to leave with her. But now I could definitely take her wherever I wanted, if I wanted. Thing of it is, there's no benefit at all to doing that. Because the final boss does not unlock until after you fight Nikolay. And there's really nowhere else to take Sen right now. Unless I wanted to take her to that tower so she could help Akira gain another level. Suppose that's always a possibility. But, nah, we're gonna push forward. You know what would be really funny? Is if something that we bypassed through all this sequence breaking triggers the battle with Nikolay. It'll be funny if I talk to him and he just pretends that we just met at the beginning of the game. But nope, not the case. That is not how this game is programmed. The way this game is programmed is that every event you pass turns on the next event. Of course, some events don't need to be turned on. Like finding Pelagia, that didn't need to be turned on because you normally can't reach her until when she would be turned on anyway. Okay, that just sounded really weird. Alright, going against you first because you heal. Gonna wanna not miss too much. Alright, Sen. Abuse this. Abuse the heck out of this. There's no guarantee I'm gonna win this fight. But I can at least give it a couple of shots. The missing is not going to be helpful at all. Uh, I was hoping he wouldn't use that already. Well, that goes. There goes one of my healers. Could revive him, but not going to worry about reviving just yet. No, don't use magic. Although magic doesn't miss. You know what? We don't want to miss. I don't know if that's causing more or less damage than he would with his regular attack, but... Take what we can get. And we can't get much. Given our predicament, definitely important to get rid of the healer now. I was not that afraid of the healer the f when I fought this guy legit. But we really don't need them lasting longer than they need to. Alright, gonna attack you because you physically attack and you're kinda strong. Okay, who are you attacking here? You're attacking Sen. 69 damage. Akira's taking 80 damage. Gonna wanna do some healing. Well, Sen still needs to attack them as a group, so we'll let Akira be the one to heal.
And the red fruit will heal sin. You know, just once, I'd like that spell to hit everybody. Man, why does that animation have to take so long? If this was any other RPG, you'd be all flip, woo, 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 and then it'd be done. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh, this is scary now. Dang. Ah, uh, really needed that to take him out. Okay. Do a little bit of this. Do a little bit of this. Ideally, I can get through this got free. Don't attack Akira. Oh, thank goodness. Alright, Akira can get away with trying to attack somebody. Let's go attack the one who keeps striking Akira. Screw you, good sir. That didn't kill ya. Somebody else needs to die, please. Or two of you can die. I would totally be accepting of that. Alright, I don't know when that froze in the back is getting his next turn, so... Kira, go ahead and heal yourself now. I think at this point we should be able to get through the rest of this fight. With only one target, we still got plenty of healing items. Should we have the Red Throat heal himself? No, I don't think it's important. I say that and then I realize that Kaya needed him to stay alive so that we could sequence break back to that heal point in Sofino Passage. No, you don't need to use Shockwave anymore. Use Fire Wave. Keeping in mind that he has a lot of HP, and Akira doesn't have his super duper sword. Alright, he's almost down. Then there we go. That was scary! That was definitely scary! But we have managed it. So this will gain Akira in another level. That's going to help. And now we're going to do some cutscenage and Sin is going to leave. So, and I'll just meet you back in Sofino. Or rather, we're going to meet you outside of Sofino. And now comes some more strategy. I want Pelagia back on my team. And we can find her over at that ruins place where Baal is located. Now we're not going to fight Baal, we're just going to go ahead and retrieve Pelagia. She'll actually be at a higher level, so that'll be kind of helpful. Alright, what won't be helpful is I feel like it's nothing but force trying to get there. Let me see if I can find a path around so that I don't have to go through random encounter territory. It's kind of hard to see where the boundary of the forest is because it's so dark. Don't have enough money to stay at the inn, though. 
Could just wait until daylight. Uh, I feel like we're going to have to deal with random encounters no matter what. It's going to be close. Alright, I think we're in the clear. Now, getting through this place is definitely going to be kind of difficult. Because there's going to be some really strong random encounters here. And we have underleveled Akira and Froads on this team. I want to say I was level 18 when I came here before. Yeah, I'm going to say 18. Of course, it would help if I actually acquired the optional quest to get in there first. So, let's, let me go ahead and get the misguided directions from the priestess and then I'll meet you in there. Alright, let's do this for real. Incidentally... I probably should just be ending this episode now and continue this next time. But in this situation, I don't care how long this bonus episode is going to go. It's a bonus episode. It can go on long. More importantly, we already did a three-part episode on this glitch. I don't want to have a two-part episode for the exact same reason. Oh, I'm going to have to go through here legit now. That's unfortunate. Right, left, left, center, right. That's unfortunate. Give me that instructions again. That completely threw me off. Right, left, left, center, right. Right. Left, left, center, right. It's a good thing there's a heal point up here. Might have to fight an encounter along the way. Oh, this. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. Alright, so third, second from the last, straight in the middle, and then all the right, all the way to the right. Third, second from the last middle all the way to the left I should say let's not get myself confused over mixing up my left with my right I'm a smarter raccoon than that I'm smarter than the average raccoon it's a good thing there's a heal point but Apparently, the hitbox for the Frode is bigger than Akira's. So, when Akira took over, he kind of, um, yeah. He was off the trigger, and so I stepped back onto it. You know the unfortunate thing? I forgot to save after coming back here with the information that I need to come back in here. So now I'm going to have to go back again. Alright, let's try this again. Third from the left, second from the right, center, and then all the way to the left. So let's see here. Third from the left, second from the right, and I guess I somehow was not able to tell where the center was. Okay, the center will be straight across from that. And in case it wasn't clear why I decided to step into the spikes twice, it's because I didn't think I would. I figure, okay, well, as long as I already am on the spikes, I guess I can just go ahead and walk through them without them triggering again. I was wrong. I guess when it switched over to Akira, it did not count him as on the spikes. Again, I'm going to blame the hitbox. But now we have made it through that part. 
And now we have to hope that we make it to the safe point before we hit a random encounter. It's a good thing there's a heal point in here. Kinda going to need it. And not even going to attempt to run from these guys. I won't make it. Well, if I die in this battle, good news is I at least had the foresight to save this time. Good news is this is the last place which we're going to have to go through that has random encounters. Don't be Akira, don't be Akira, don't be Akira. Oh, thank goodness. Still the scary situation. Could still lose this fight. By the way, it occurs to me that I'm going to be able to do something of interest by the end of this sequence breaking. So, look forward to that. You would use that attack. Alright. Meet you back in this room. Alright, can I make it to the save point this time? Yes. That is the important thing. I could die along the way to the heal point right next to the save point. But as long as I can just reload the save right next to the heal point, that's okay. Alright, I feel better now. Can we get out of this room without an encounter? Good. Alright, and then we come to this maze. This isn't the maze. Oh, it's this room. So, you'll notice that there's a regular, plain old door right there. I feel like that door was supposed to be locked. Because... Grabbing these treasure chests, starting from that one and going counterclockwise, you will get a key. However, you never actually use that key. I feel like the key was supposed to be going to that door, but Tsunami forgot to lock the door, so... You know what? I might know how to get through that puzzle now, but... Screw that puzzle. We're sequence breaking it. Alright, here's the maze. I'm glad there's not any random encounters on this floor. Also, there's going to be four treasures on this floor. And this time, won't have to throw any of them away. Actually, the, I'm pretty sure at least one of them is going to be a treasure I... It's, it's going to be an equipable thing. I can sell that and get some more healing items for the final battle. No, not that way. It was this way. I don't have the map open. Oh, no, I was wrong. I don't have the map of this open this time, so I'm kind of going through here without any help, but it wasn't that long ago that I went through this dungeon, so I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going. The next treasure is going to be right up here to the right. Medicine. I'm just going to sell that. I know there's people inside the castle that can poison you, but upon re-watching that last episode, it occurred to me that we got healed before the, before the fight with beast form Mephistopheles, or Mephistopheles rather. It was either before the king form or before the beast form. So, really don't need to worry about poison. 
to sell the medicine and that might give us a bit more money for even more healing items. Also, I was wrong. We did not get any equipment from those treasure chests. I'm thinking of the treasure chests inside Ryu Tower. And I don't quite feel like going to get treasure there. I don't think. Might be beneficial. Might be beneficial. We'd be dealing with random encounters. But having more healing items would definitely be helpful. No, don't go downstairs. Okay, which side was the save point? I'm hoping this side. I was right. Alright, there are random encounters on this floor. Hopefully we don't hit any before Pelagia joins. Okay, good. We made it. So now Pelagia is back on our team. We'll just take care of these guys real quick. Won't be an easy task, of course. The guy in the back can use Fissure, but Pelagia doesn't have a spell to go after the guy in the back. Let's start with Lightning, just so we don't miss. <sighs> so that's what you're going to be doing against the final boss, I take it. Still feel like it would be beneficial to keep you in the front though, so that you can be a target. Alright, one down. Good job, target. I think we got this now. Well, your fire spell isn't causing a whole lot of damage, but at least it's still causing some. That might still be useful on the final boss. Of course, you would miss. Okay, this gonna be painful but nothing to worry about I'm glad that spell doesn't hit everybody somebody in this game does have a spell that hits everybody with an earth attack it was one of the earlier bosses I want to say Now, it's too bad you don't gain a level from that fight. Alright, skip that cutscene. Now, normally we, we would not be able to backtrack from here. There's an invisible event right there where Pelagia or somebody will be all, let's keep going, and then the game will push us forward. However, we got this road. And like I said, you can easily just go through the walls without worrying about getting stuck in dungeons. That said, I wanna, don't want to just wander around. As tempting as it is to take a look around this place, this does have random encounters. Don't feel like dealing with those. So we're just going to back up until we back ourselves onto the teleporter out of this place. Huh. Interestingly, it does not trigger. I guess you have to actually walk onto it. Maybe I didn't have to go through the wall to get through here then. Maybe I could have just backed up from there. Ah, well. One half of one dozen... Whatever the saying is. Alright. 
And now we have Pelagia with us. We're going to be able to take her to the final boss. That's cool. The downside is, since we have a full team, that means that Monica is not actually going to be able to join us. Unless we leave the froze behind. Go back to the guy in islands, deal with the boss there, gain a level 1 spell and that sort of thing. But, I'm not going to do that. Not, not with Pelagia, or not with Monica, leaving your team for the true final battle. Alright, let's heal up first. Hmm. Level 15. Palikia was only given one level? Really? I feel like that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. She was at level 14 earlier. Only one level. Well, every level helps. Go ahead and equip this, by the way, while we're thinking about it. It's going to be kind of important to have that extra attack power. And we can maybe sell your old sword. I don't know if we can. It might not be worth anything. But we can at least give it a shot. Whatever money we can get. Anyway, I have put Pelagia in the lead to do something interesting. You might recall how when you come here... Pelagia is taken out of your team and is standing next to her awful father. And of course, after getting her on her, your team again at the ruins, you're not able to come back here with her. So the question is, is there another Pelagia in here? The answer is going to be no, I guarantee it. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong? Huh. I thought for sure that when a character joined your team, they're no longer active on the map. Is this a different Pelagia? And I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'm going to have to check and see if there's another Pelagia in the character screen, character editor. Okay, well, this works. We got two Pelagias. Don't let them touch, it'll make the universe explode. Nicolay's estate is just north of here, but so far the barrier that surrounds it. Okay, so even though we defeated Nicolay, her message has not changed. Hmm. So, let's go ahead and... Well, I, I want to find this out now. I'm going inside the inn, I'm going to save, and I'm going to find out if there's more than one Pelagia in the character editor. Alright, so here's the character editor. This is every character and NPC in the game. You can have up to a hundred people in your game. Why only a hundred? Because each one of these people has stats. For example, let's take a look at Lenny the Clown here. He has stats. They're all at zero, but they're there. You could potentially have this guy be a playable character. Oh right, I was wanted to see if there was more than one Pelagia. So there's Pelagia once, and there is there is more than one Pelagia. Huh. Which Pelagia are you? Let me guess. Okay, so the Pelagia that joins your team is actually different than the Pelagia inside Yeltsin Estate. That is not normal, by the way. Like I said, I'm pretty sure under normal circumstances, if one of these characters is on your team, for example, if we put this Pelagia on our team, the one inside that house will disappear because we can't have more than one Pelagia. Unless, of course, we actually make more than one Pelagia. Alright, well, that solves that mystery. Now, let us go ahead and proceed onward to... somewhere. Maybe get some healing items. Yeah. 
All right, I'm going to point this out now, just in case I would forget to point it out later, because I probably would. Yes, Pelagia can sell her old sword. It's worth 50 gold. Hmm. So, this is interesting. Monica's back here. What are you doing here? Remember, the next demon captain should be so Oh yeah, that's why. Right. You don't actually leave here to go looking for demons to kill, like that worm, until after we get through the Gaian Islands, which we have not. Well, this is going to make this conversation interesting. Let's get into here where we have a camera angle to make this interesting. Stop going up. I want to kind of do this so that Monica is clearly on screen. Oh, just forget it. Oh, this will do. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. He doesn't trigger. He hasn't triggered yet. Why hasn't he triggered? What is his trigger for telling us to go to the final dungeon? We defeated Nikolay. Apparently, Nikolay is not the trigger. So what is the trigger then? And in case you're wondering, the thing that I thought would be interesting would be, you have to go help Monica, but she's standing right there. That's what I was expecting. But no, there's something else we have to do if we want to get to the final boss. What is it? Actually, I'm going to feel kind of stupid right now because I was looking for one particular message, not realizing that he does in fact give a message talking about Monica being gone. Hello, my son. If you're looking for Monica, she's out right now handling church business. You don't say. And if you say that message, then I know exactly what needs to be done. Alright, so here's how this works. That message right there is only available, well normally, only available after you take care of the demon inside the Gaian Islands. I wanna say... No. No, I think it actually takes place after you've gone through the volcano. Yeah, so going through the volcano will trigger his next page, which is that message. And then dealing with Nikolay would advance him another page of code, which would be the page that makes him all... You had to help Monica! So the only way that I'm getting to the final boss is if I lose the froze. That's unfortunate. Just bought them a few healing items. Okay, well, let me see what I want to do here. Because I do kind of want to take care of the final boss. But now it's looking a whole lot less likely given that it'll just be Akira and Pelagia. But I gotta try it. The downside is this means going through that volcano as well. Alright, let me go ahead and get this item situation sorted out because don't want the green throat and red throat taking all of my items. Nope, sure enough, can't access the castle until we're told to go to it. If I wanted to, I could cheat and just alter the code to get in there. But I don't want to cheat like that. I might be using an exploit, but at least the exploit is within the rules of the game. <sighs> Even having gained a couple of extra levels more than I'm supposed to be at at this dungeon, accuracy still sucks. 
By the way, in case it's not clear what's going on in which I have to say goodbye to the Frodes, I'll try to explain it as best as I can. So, one would probably expect that upon defeating Nicolay, that would trigger the dialogue with Mr. Priestman where he says, You have to go help Monica! But that's not how the scripting in this particular game is done. Rather, every time we refer to Mr. Priestman, he is told to advance a single page of code. In this case, he was advanced to the page where he's all, Ah, Monica is out on church duty. You can go find her if you want. So, I had to find the other trigger that advances him another page. That way, we can finally get through this and have fun with this glitch, whatever. Point is, this is the way it has to be done. Did I mention that accuracy is annoying? Go after that guy. By the way, I do not plan to show the, the entire trick back through the volcano. No, I should have gone after that guy. Because, of course, we would miss! I'm not going to show the trek through the whole volcano because it won't be anything different that we haven't seen before. I'll show the boss at the end. That'll be interesting fighting it with Pelagia on the team. Which is why I'm showing this boss fight. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure that I was expecting able to explain the situation with the priest well enough. I really hope that you at least get the gist of it. The gist of it is he needs to be had a... Uh, let's try that again. He needed to be triggered again. It's as simple as that. He needs so many triggers in order to reach the page of code in which he is all go help Monica. And we are currently making the effort to go after that last trigger that we need. That is the way to explain that. Please stay dead. And everybody stop missing! Oh hey! He's susceptible to critical hits. Now he won't be able to do anything. Save your MP. And now he's dead. I'm not sure, have I had a chance to show off a critical hit in this let's play? I mean, I've gotten critical hits, but I think they always resulted in the enemy dying. But that right there is what normally happens when you get a critical hit. They get dizzy, and they won't be able to do anything for a few turns. Basically, a critical hit inflicts paralysis. Oh my goodness! This is why I don't like Akira being alone, by the way. Because that. At least with this group, we have people to back him up in case he misses. Though again, all we needed was maybe another 30 points in his agility stat. And he wouldn't miss so dang much. Same goes for the other characters. You need high agility in order to not miss. Can we just use lightning on you? Don't know why I wasn't trying that in the first place. That's my own dang fault right there. Just use lightning. That don't miss. There. 
That fight probably went a whole lot faster because I remembered to use lightning. Well, we're going to be losing the Frodes, but at least we're going to be gaining a couple of levels and spells out of this. Actually, I'm kind of curious. Along the way to the volcano, I'll stop back at Revenus to see if that was enough of a trigger. <sighs> nope. I'm gonna have to go through the volcano in order to access that last trigger that I need to get Mr. Priestman to tell me to help Monica. That basically means that through all this effort, the only dungeon we can actually skip on the way to the final boss is Ryu Tower. Also the optional dungeons. Ah well, it's not a complete loss. I still get to go to the final boss with Pelagia. Can't do that normally. And since I haven't gone after those optional dungeons, I'm going to be going to the final boss at a lower level, so it should be interesting. Anyway, I'm back in the Sofino shop because of this. It occurs to me that when I reach the Sofino shop earlier in this bonus episode, I could have bought this. This is a better sword than the one that Akira has right now. Of course, since it's grayed out, I didn't really pay much attention to it. However, well, that's because it's, I don't have enough money, by the way. It is grayed out because I don't have enough money. However, once I do have enough money, it kind of stands out. That's a shame. Had I come here and I had enough money, I would have noticed that and be like, Oh, I could get this better sword. That's too bad. It would have been fun to use this more powerful sword against Leviathan, who at that point I was not supposed to have this sword. But I still get to use this sword against the boss in the volcano who I am not supposed to be fighting with this sword. Good times. Also, it occurs to me that... I probably won't actually have the most powerful sword in the game for the final boss this time either. Yeah, I'd have to go through the arena in order to get that sword, and we're not going to the arena. I mean, we could go to the arena, but we could also play this game properly, and obviously we're not going to be doing that. By the way, as a reminder, the only way to access the arena is to receive the key to it, which is going to be received right after this boss fight. It's too bad we can't use the froze to break into the arena. We also couldn't use the pros to get through this dungeon, since this dungeon doesn't unlock until after the Frodes leave. Oh, why? Why do you all miss? Thank you for actually... Oh, that's right! This thing is only, the first phase is only weak against magic. And then the second phase is only weak to physical attacks. Kind of forgot about that. Well, that's unfortunate. That means Pelagia has got no use in this first phase. On the bright side, that means we can just go ahead and speed things up by having her defend. Assuming her next turn comes up. Which is not. I imagine that Ice Spell of Akira's is stronger than it was the first time I went through here, thanks to those extra level ups we got. All right. 
right, Akira, you got this sword that is stronger than the one you're supposed to have. See what it does. 77. I am not impressed. It's kind of funny that the Centurion is still stronger than Akira. Sixty-six, you could die, but I'm not concerned. I should be concerned. I still think it's funny that your sword is called the Shinning Sword. Just swipe at those legs. Too bad there's no way to keep the Centurion on my team, either. There's no way to do that, I don't think. Outside of just modifying the code. Alright, another level, another spell. This should trigger... The code that makes Mr. Priestman tell us to help Monica. And while we're on our way back, it occurs to me that thanks to this sequence breaking, Ivan is still going to be alive. Well, kind of. He's currently in the process of being attacked by Sen. But aside from that, he's not dead yet. So we're technically going to beat this game before Ivan dies. Alright, good. This scene is triggered. So let us finally get on to fighting Mephistopheles. And in case anybody is wondering... Sin is not here. Not entirely sure what is up with that. She normally appears here in the arena after fighting with her at Nicolay's place. There must be some other trigger. Whatever that trigger is, I don't really care to figure it out. It's not important. However, the gold division is still opened up, so we would still be able to fight her, in case you're curious. Hmm, this would be how we would get the best sword in the game, too. I'll kind of think of it. Oh, boy. Normally, we can't actually... Hmm. Normal, normally, we can't fight in the arena with a party member, but we have a party member. Oh, wait, wait. We have Pelagia. We have Pelagia on my team, and Pelagia is somebody we fight. I'm going to go save, because I'm curious what happens if we try to fight Pelagia with Pelagia. I mean, heck, this counts as sequence breaking. Wasn't supposed to be able to do this yet. Certainly not with Pelagia on my team, or anybody. So, this should be interesting. Let's see what's going to wind up happening. Definitely at an advantage here, with two party members. Question is, am I going to want that sword? It probably would be helpful to have the sword at the end of this.
That's quite a bit of damage there. Kind of think of it, when I came through this arena before, I had the most powerful spell in the game. And now I do not. I don't even have Shockwave. Shockwave you get by taking on an optional quest with Monica. And there's no way to sequence break that, by the way. Huh, sure enough, we got Pelagia versus Pelagia. That's, that's funny. I'm surprised the game did not crash trying to... Huh. Trying to render Pelagia, who is already on my team. Well, that was definitely the most interesting part of this little adventure here, so, um... Probably just going to skip ahead. Well, looks like I'm not going to be going to the final battle with that sword. You would think that with Pelagia having an empty slot in her inventory, it would go to her. But no, Tsunami decided to give it to Akira, and only Akira, instead of just our party. And as has been pointed out multiple times in the comments, it is the fact that it is only being given to Akira that causes the issue where you're not given the option to drop something. It's kind of interesting that it does not carry over to your next party member either. That's dumb. So, wasted a spotted egg. Alright, well, I'm gonna sell that escape charm and uh, buy a couple more spotted eggs. And then I will meet you back in Millus, where we shall acquire Monica and get dealing with the final boss. Alright, here we are back in Millus Castle. Let's go ahead and kind of take care of this. Eh, too bad we don't have Shockwave. This is going to be interesting. Well, Akira's still able to take these guys down in one hit. How about you, Monaka? Now that we know that we get healed before the beast fight against Mephistopheles, Mephistopheles, it does not hurt to go ahead and throw some holy spells around. Don't worry, Pelagia, you'll get some use at some point. Alright, not going to fight you, but going to grab this treasure, as well as the other treasures that are in this place. Your inventory is full. Oh, that's right. That's because Monica... This was before I went to fight the worm with Monica, so she did not use the items that she had at the time. Interesting. Well, that's cool. I Means she's got some items to help us out in the upcoming battle. Also, this gives us an opportunity to find something out. This option, for certain, works properly in regards to giving your secondary character an item. It does not go to Akira, or only Akira. It goes to your whole party. So, if your inventory is full, what happens then? Nothing. We did not get the sirloin. So there you go, folks. For anybody who was commenting, oh, that glitch only occurred because Tsunami was trying to give it to Akira and not your whole party. Even if you give it to your whole party, the game does not give you the option to toss something. Yeah, I might as well show, show the fight with these guys. Give Pelagia a chance to do something. Or we could just use another holy spell. 
Eh, we'll let Pelagia attack. Can she take him out in one hit? Nope. Too bad. Alright, well, the rest of this fight is not going to be interesting, so let's skip to his lordship. Alright, King Claudius. Akira and Monica was able to take him out in two hits. Can they do the same this time? Or is Pelagia going to have to help? Nope, gonna need Pelagia's help. Don't miss! Also, safe to say that we were healed for this particular fight. I don't know if we will also get healed for the fight against his beast form, but at the very least we were healed for this fight. Alright, and here we go. I do not expect much trouble from this fight. Okay, knowing that we get healed after this fight, go ahead and just use magic. Let's not risk missing. And of course, use plenty of holy spells. I wonder if we'll be able to see that one attack of his. I didn't get it on camera. Oh, he does have a cure spell. I knew it! Only 40 points, though. That's not at all helpful for him. That is a wasted turn. Look at that. Just one attack there, and we already dealt more damage than he healed. Curing would have been a bigger issue had he... Hmm. Guess he's weak against ice. Had he healed more... HP, then I'm taking away. Or was he weak against ice? Maybe I wasn't paying attention to the amount of damage we're being dealing with here. Okay, is this hitting all of us or one of us? Just one of us. And it's Monica. Alright, we might not actually get to see that attack of his that I was talking about. It can hit all of us. But I don't feel like waiting around to actually hit all of us. Let's just take care of this guy. No, no. I'm not going to wait for him to use that attack of his because who knows how long it would take before he actually used it. We'll probably take too much damage waiting for it. Alright, so that took care of that. So at this point we have some things go down and Monica is kicked out of the team and Akira with normal circumstances have to fight the final battle on his own. Because of course he has to fight the final battle on his own. I would not expect it any other way. But the reason I bring this up is because while watching the final battle after I recorded it, I realized it was not that interesting. We were basically just trading blows. I'd attack, he'd attack, I'd attack, he'd attack. Oh, my health is getting low. I'll just heal that back up. Okay, rinse and repeat. This is kind of a common problem when it comes to one-on-one -on -one battles, especially boss battles. Because, like I said, you're just trading blows. Not to mention, considering this is the Demon Lord we're fighting, he didn't seem all that strong in the fight. And that is because he can't be all that strong in this fight. If he's too powerful, we're not going to make any real progress. We're, we're just going to be too busy trying to keep ourselves alive to actually deal any sort of damage against him. 
It is much more interesting when you actually have multiple teammates, either on your side or the other. Because then there's more options being done. Like, in this situation, Akira and Pelagia, while Akira is attacking Mephistophia Mephistopheles, Pelagia is boosting our attacks. Maybe also use guard, not sure if that'll be worth the time. Not to mention, if Mephistopheles was programmed with a group of teammates in mind, he'd be able to be more powerful. Because we have other teammates who can back us up, like so. Did not want to use a sirloin. Wanted to use a sirloin in case his health was lower than 100 HP. That is, if he's taking 100 damage. Also, curse to me, we're fighting at night. It's still kind of peaceful looking outside, but it's a little bit more um, appropriate given what we're fighting. It also makes it a lot more obvious that he's glowing red. I'm curious what he's capable of doing to Akira. I mean Pelagia. I'm curious what he's capable of doing to Pelagia. Kinda think of it, as long as we got Pelagia as backup, Akira can try using a spell to see if... Aha! He does have a cure spell on this form, but again, it does not enough to actually matter. Let's find out if that spell wore off. Nope. That's okay. We had Pelagia to co go in there and deal some backup damage. Nope, don't use skills again. Would be nice if we could. There's a hit against Pelagia. Only 50 points of damage, but that was just a regular attack. It wasn't airstrike. So not going to worry about healing. There he is using that again. Does he use that automatically? Did he use that because it wore out? But then he's all, nope. And then we're still having to use regular attacks. That's what it seems like. If only there was a way to tell that that spell wore off. Ah, too bad we don't have the froze with us. Well, that takes care of that. This is obviously not that impressive, given that we had to finish off the Gaian Islands and the volcano anyway. But, at least I got to go through that with Pelagia on the team. And a weaker sword. I wasn't quite at max level either, so... You know, it was different. But still not all that difficult, given that he was programmed just to fight one person. He couldn't be too difficult. Anyway, I guess that's pretty much it then. We are done with this Let's Play. And you know, I feel like celebrating.
Lunch is on me, guys. Sir, go bleep yourself. Whoa, where did that come from? And that's not a question. If you're going to act like that, then you've just lost yourself. You're not even a customer! You've never once bought anything here! You just come in here to bother me, and I'm sick of it! So, just get out! Fine. Gosh, someone has an attitude problem. Okay, then. Well, um, never mind on the lunch. Out of curiosity, what happens if we go back in? Will he repeat that last message? Nope, he goes back to the first message, so we can repeat this all over again if we want. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and end this Let's Play. So, down at the bottom of the screen is all of my patrons. And next time, we're not playing this game anymore. We are done with this game. Ah, feels kind of nice. Especially given that this is a redo. It was totally worth redoing this game. As for what I'm going to be playing next, well, there is the obvious. I'm going to be playing some Bunny Link to the Past. That'll be starting up relatively soon. But as for the next RPG Maker game, it's going to be an RPG Maker 2 game. Something on RPG M2. What game it'll be, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't really looked yet, because RPG Maker 2 games take a lot of space on the PlayStation 2 memory card, and I want to be able to clear this game off of the memory card first. Now that we're done with this game, I can start looking. What game it'll be, I do have some idea of what I want. I want to do an RPG Maker game 2... Let's try that again. I want to do an RPG Maker 2 game that makes use of the camera. I want to see that camera moving during cutscenes. I mean, RPG Maker 2 is a 3D RPG Maker, and it actually takes advantage of the 3D. Unlike this game, in which it doesn't really do anything with the 3D. I mean, sure, you have the occasional house where you can go upstairs, but it doesn't change the fact that you're only playing on one level, as I will demonstrate as I get to this house. There's no downstairs. These stairs are pointless. They're going to an upper level where there is no lower level. What is even the point? There's no point to the 3D. You might as well have done this in 2D. The only advantage with 3D is if you get to go to the fact. The only advantage to having 3D in this game is the fact that you can have your character move in 360 degrees. Also, I guess you can have camera angles in battles, but you have no control over that. Point is, there's nothing about the 3D in this game that is that special. It's just 3D for the sake of being 3D. Whereas RPG Maker 2 actually allows you to take advantage of the fact that you're in 3D. You can have camera control during cutscenes. You can have areas that go over each other. You can have an upstairs that is actually upstairs. So, definitely want to do some sort of game on RPG Maker 2 that takes advantage of the 3D. Plus, it's part of my reboot. I am rebooting my RPG Maker Let's Plays, so the first RPG Maker 2 game of my reboot has to be something somewhat special. It doesn't have to be a great game, but it has to be a decent game that takes advantage of the 3D. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start looking for that game, and I will see you for whatever game that is. Thank you guys for watching, this was definitely an enjoyable Let's Play. Good game. Flawed, but a good game.